Hey, Mike here, uh, doing some second tests on a little DC compressor and the dehumidifier arrangement that I have going on here. Now, uh, my preliminary test didn't show uh, uh, that it was going to work out very well with this particular cap tube setup. It's uh, 12 feet of .031 uh, bore cap tubing. It's the full 12 feet out of the packaging. I uh, just went ahead and started with that because uh, I didn't do the mathematical calculations to figure out based on the flow rates and latent heat and size there. Uh, the, yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> just trial and error. Just just getting to understand the machine a little bit. So, um, what I'm finding out is uh, with my uh, goofy little scale here, kitchen scale, and I charged up about three and a half ounces, which is about what I did in the first test. Um, and just based on some simple observations of uh, you know both yes the pressures that exist I mean my, my low side which is pretty important for the, the setup here uh, to get close to you know 10 degrees or so below the dew point uh, maybe more uh, it's generally a little bit too low it's too cold I mean right now we're at about 40 maybe about 35 psi which associates to yeah, somewhere around like 14, 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's way too cold. You can see it's frosted up right after the cap tube there. And it's condensing across the cap tube and it's frosting up. And then, uh, you know, it only frosts about for one, not even one whole loop. Uh, a little bit of condensation. Just not nearly enough uh, uh, refrigerant flow. Hell of a lot of superheat coming back. Um, and then on the condenser, uh, we have a lot of discharge superheat. The compressor's pretty hot. Um, first loop or two, warm, I mean this is really hot, it's warm, and then it really starts to cool off substantially to where about room temperature there, and probably even colder till the end as air passes across the evaporator and then cools the condenser, is ultimately subcooling here, so probably only condensation is occurring, you know, right up in here in these top portion of the uh, condenser, the very, the remainder of it is subcooling. Um, the way I'm interpreting this. Uh, so there's liquid backed up in here. Um, so the refrigerant charge is, well, in this case it's in excess, but it doesn't really matter. There's too much cap tube, too much restriction there. Um, you know, like I said, pressure's too low on the low side, uh, too much liquid backing up on the high side. Uh, good subcooling, but uh, it's far in excess. I mean, I probably wouldn't want to go anywhere beyond about this point as far as subcooling. Uh, I want to use as much condenser as I can to dump heat uh, and to do uh, to uh, to condense the high side. So, um, discharging a little bit of heat here, but all in all, you know, any moisture that's actually forming on the coils is probably being picked right back up, and passed across through the air. So we're really not doing any dehumidifying at all. But um, it is interesting nonetheless to uh, play with the the device and uh, to see that it has some potential, but uh, obviously it has some limitations, uh, you know, just based on the sheer size of it. So I am going to uh, uh, remove the refrigerant, um, evacuate it, because I'm going to do some brazing, so I want to get all the propane out. Um, I don't, don't want to have a fire. Uh, I'm going to unbraze the uh, cap tube here, pull it out, remove some certain amount of the cap tube. Haven't decided how much, probably somewhere between six inches to a foot because uh, I think I need to remove a fair amount. Uh, might just go with a foot and then rebraze it in uh, while nitrogen purging, of course. Um, vacuum it down and then charge it back up. Don't know if I'm going to get to that here tonight. It's getting late. But um, probably tomorrow I'd like to get this thing uh, somewhat under control. Um, my first experiences with cap tubing. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the setup of the system. It seems to be pretty easy to work with. So. Oh, one other thing. Um, still having some issue with the fluttering on my low side. I discussed that in a previous video. Uh, replaced uh, what was fitting like this as brass um, finger tightening, finger tight, you know, arrangement with a copper uh, flare system. You can see that I pinched it there. Still was getting some fluttering, so I pinched it again. Still got some fluttering. So I might not be able to get rid of that entirely without going to a um, glycerin filled gauge. But uh, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. I was getting <laughs> 30, 30 psi or so in range, but uh, it's relatively easy to read, so not a huge issue. Thanks for watching.